Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to get cracking. So uh, if you haven't already, please make the heading, which is acceleration. And we'll get to that in a brief moment. Um, we've been looking at simple harmonic motion, right? And I don't know how many of you have seen this video before, but it's one of my favorites. I've watched it, well, I'm going to say more times than I'd like to admit. But hopefully you can see why it's the kind of thing that's just like over and over again. I can just sort of watch this endlessly. And for me, what it illustrates is the beauty of simple harmonic motion. Let me say that one more time. This is about the beauty of simple harmonic motion. We can understand it, we can manipulate it, but I hope we don't lose track of the sight that it's really quite amazing to behold. Now, I want to remind you what we know about simple harmonic motion, right? We started with this idea of acceleration or force acting upon something that sends it back in the direction that it came from. So you can see that negative is really the key there. So wherever your displacement is, whatever x value you have, you take the negative of that. So if you're in the positive direction, your acceleration, your force is acting in the negative direction and vice versa. If you're in the negative direction, force or acceleration acting in the positive direction and that's what sends everything back in its opposite direction. And one of the things we noticed was that our old trigonometric function friends were perfect for illustrating this because as you differentiate, you can see you get this uh, minus n squared and you can recognize that x there down the bottom in the a and the sine nt plus alpha. And this is where we went, right? Now the important thing that I want to get across to you is that these equations down the bottom here, they're all time equations. Do you see that? They're all in terms of t. And that's kind of handy, like if you know what time, you know, you set this experiment going and then you can fast forward to some certain amount of time, you can know exactly where something is. Question? It is supposed to be an x double dot. In fact, I even looked at that and I thought, oh, I need to fix that. And then I forgot. Uh, so <laughs> that's, that's the acceleration equation down the bottom, of course. Thank you, Trin, for pointing that out. Now, the thing that I want to get across to us today is that we had to go away from the definition of simple harmonic motion, which is this a uh, special equation up the top here. What's it called again, by the way, when you have an equation that relates uh, a function with one of its derivatives? What's that called? A differential equation, right? We had to basically abandon the differential equation and work with the time equations to start doing stuff. If we wanted to know amplitude, if we wanted to know center of motion, et cetera, et cetera. But what I want to do is take us back to this idea of acceleration or force in terms of displacement, because often where you are is much more important than when you are, when it comes to understanding the forces acting upon you. Does that make sense? If you have a look at a situation like this, do I care about the time? Like it's just a fixed image that shows you, that visualizes all of the magnetic forces going on here. And really to know what kind of forces are acting upon you, all you need to know is where you are in relation to the magnet. Make sense? So this is acceleration that we want to, or force, that we want to understand in terms of displacement, right? Not in terms of time. And in addition to knowing it in terms of displacement, we might also be interested in force or acceleration in terms of, say, velocity, right? You might remember this from the first example that I gave when we were introducing mechanics. When you're flying at speeds like an F-35 jet can fly, your shape matters a whole lot. Like the fact that your wings are swept back at a particular angle and your fins are you know, this exact size and magnitude, they matter because when you're traveling at these speeds, aerodynamic drag is kind of enormous, right? So this would be a force acting upon your plane, your jet, that's in direct relation to your velocity, right? The faster you go, the more drag you experience. Make sense? So this is acceleration, not in terms of displacement, but acceleration in terms of velocity. So what we want to do is explore this. Let me put this to bed for a second. I asked you to make the heading of acceleration. And what we're going to do is think about acceleration as a function of velocity first. So a function of velocity or as a function of displacement, right? As opposed to a function of time. So I want us to think about what is acceleration. There are many different ways to define what acceleration is uh, and therefore what defines the force acting upon an object. Uh, velocity is kind of the first step, right? Velocity is how acceleration, sorry, velocity is how displacement is changing with respect to time. Do you agree with that? Velocity, uh, I need another color. 
velocity is the change in displacement compared to the change in time. Right? How do we define acceleration in similar terms? Acceleration equals... How velocity changes time. Fantastic. It's not how displacement is changing, it's how velocity is changing. So it's the next step down after velocity, that's why we differentiate again. So what I can do is I can start with this definition, that it is the change in velocity compared to the change in time. So far so good? Now, this is good, this is something that I can work with because if I want to change the variable, like this, might, this is all in terms of time at the moment, right? So we might have had that a sine nt plus alpha and then we differentiate with respect to time. Off you go, okay? How would I change the variable? Now, I want you to think back to extension one, think about the integration that we've done recently. If you want to change a variable, say you introduce a substitution into an integration, right? Essentially what you're doing is you're using chain rule. Do you agree? You know, chain rule works, it cha you, like, you introduce a u, and then you've got a du on dx, and then you've got a dx on etc. Right? So what I want to do here is take this derivative, it's a derivative, and I want to use chain rule, I want to chain together a pair of derivatives that will help me change this to no longer be in terms of time. Okay? Yes, J.U. Are you going to give me a suggestion for what two derivatives, or are you going to ask a question? Or? Okay, if you know the answer yet, before you get to that, right, I want to, because some of you may already know how to do this, right, I want you to see why we're doing what we're doing, right? If I'm going to come from here, which is dv on dt, then there has to be dv somewhere on the top, and there has to be a dt somewhere on the bottom. Do you agree? Otherwise, there's no continuity, there's no connection, okay? So then really the question just becomes, stock standard chain rule, what do I put here? Like, I need the same thing to be in both of these spots so that it will cancel and go back to there. Otherwise, it's not actually equal. Right? Now when you have a look on the board in terms of where we are trying to head to, what do you think is an appropriate candidate to try and introduce to change our variable? Yes. How about dx? Because I'm trying to get to acceleration as a function of displacement. So if I go ahead and put a dx here and here, do you agree? I haven't done anything dramatic, I've just kind of done a reverse of the chain rule. Usually chain rule goes in that direction. Okay? Progress. I've introduced this, the x's which weren't here at all. Okay? I'm on my way. What's this thing here? This uh, dx on no, no, it's here. This dx on dt. We wrote it right above, right? This is just by definition velocity change in displacement compared to change in time. So what I can do is I'll just stick it over here by convention. If I write that just as v, there's velocity, and then I have this other thing over here, dv on dx. See this line right here? This is important, we've made a fundamental change. We are no longer thinking, like all my t's are gone. Do you see that, right? So this is no longer acceleration in terms of time. This is acceleration in terms of v here, v there. This is acceleration as a function of velocity. Does that make sense? So if I have some situation, like my jet aircraft before, where I understand the force acting on something, the acceleration, being in relation to the velocity, then this is a really helpful way to say what the acceleration is. It's certainly much more helpful than this. Okay? So this line right here, let's call this acceleration as a function of velocity. Okay? I need to go further though. Right? I'm trying to get in terms of not velocity, I want to get over to displacement. So you know that trick that I used before, which was to use chain rule, right? I can do it again. Right? I can use chain rule again to get rid of, here I got rid of this dt, right? See this? dt is here, and then it's sort of gone through this substitution. I want to do this again. I've got a dv on dx here, right? And I want to introduce some derivative that gets rid of these dvs, right? Because I want to get to just being in terms of x's. So I need to have some d on dv here. Do you see that's going to cancel things out for me? This dv and this dv will cancel just like this dx and this dx, yeah? So then the question is, what do I put in here? I want this to correspond to something on the previous line. Now have a look, I've got my dv on dx, it's just unchanged, right? So where this section of my line has to come from is here. d on dv of something gives me v d on dv of something, tell me the thing that you differentiate with respect to v that will give you v. Now, the way you could do that is, now, if you're thinking of displacement, you're actually thinking in terms of not velocity, but time, right? 
if I integrate up with respect to time, I will get displacement. But here I'm trying to integrate with respect to v, with respect to velocity, right? So to get from here to here is actually an integration step. Do you agree? Because right, if I integrate this way, then I differentiate that way, which is actually what I want. So can someone tell me what's the integral of v with respect to v? I raise the power and then divide by my new power. Right? We're so, much, so used to thinking of this in terms of x's that like, just because it's a v, we look at it a bit funny. right? But do you agree? If I differentiate this with respect to v, power comes out the front, power reduces by 1, you get v. Are you okay with that? All right, now as promised, I did this whole reverse chain rule thing again so that I could cancel out what was happening on those derivatives that I didn't want. I didn't want the dv's, and I can cancel them now. Right? What do I get? I get d of half v squared. That's a bit weird. We're not used to seeing something more than just a single letter after the differential operator there. Right? That's what's on the top. And then tell me, have a look at this line. After the dv's cancel, what's left? on the bottom. Yeah. dx is literally the only thing left once you cross these things out here. dx. Have a look at this line. This, just like we started with up here, here's a derivative with respect to time. This is a derivative with respect to displacement. This is acceleration as a function of x of displacement. It's kind of bothering me a little bit that I've used f twice because they are clearly not the same function. So I'll, I'll use a g. There you go. I really probably should have done that the first time. But what we've done here is we have gone back from our definition for acceleration and we've done some calculus black magic to change it. Instead of being with reference to time, it's now with respect to displacement. Now, these are weird looking results and using them is a bit strange and unusual but you've got a little bit of help with it. If you go back to your trusty friend, the reference sheet. Uh, we've looked at this before, right? On the very last page in the sort of extension 2e section. Let me zoom in for you because I have terrible eyesight, right? Here's the mechanics section. Now, if you have a look, we, we focused on these lines down here before, simple harmonic motion. And we utterly ignored this line underneath the heading. Look at it again closely. You can see the dv on dt there which was our, where we started with as our definition for acceleration. But notice that if you're the first derivative of velocity, you're also the second derivative of displacement. Start from displacement, go down twice to get to acceleration. And then there's other two results on the right hand side. They're the ones that we just worked out now. Acceleration as a function of velocity is the third one. Acceleration as a function of displacement is the last one.